We teach according to scriptures. Joseph is the father of Christ. Next brother goes, no, Christ didn't have no daddy. That's confusion, brothers. Read it again. Who's reading? First Corinthians chapter one, verses 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. Y'all see that? That there be no divisions amongst you. In the raising of our nation, every camp must be within that camp. They must be on one accord with what their doctrine is, which should be the laws in Christ. We here must be on one accord, total agreement with what's being taught. If you're coming with something else, you're causing division. Okay, and you're setting yourself up for a fall. Read it again. That ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Y'all see that? That you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now get that in 1 Corinthians 14, call verse. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet. If any man think himself to be a prophet. Or spiritual. Or if you think you're a spiritual brother, spiritual sister. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Then you must acknowledge that all the letters of Paul are the commandments of God. So when he said that we be perfectly joined together, that's not a suggestion. That's a commandment. Okay? So, brother, no hard feelings. Okay? You, if you know you're Israel and you believe immaculate conception, you got to find a congregation that teaches that. But it is not here. Okay? It is not here. If you believe in uh, not getting a job, not working, not taking care of your family. Multiple wives. Multiple wives. You gotta find some, I'm sure there's some congregations out there that teach that. Find them. But it is not here. It is not here. And follow them 100%. Right. And follow them 100%. We won't get our feelings hurt. We see you, Lord's will. We might see you in the kingdom. From there, let's go to Luke chapter 1. And verse 26. And you brothers in the different states, make sure you're on three times a week minimum. The Sabbath being mandatory, which is today. Um, you could be on Friday night too. Um, and Wednesday, which is Camp 101. And because that's the class where they're going to show you how to teach on the streets. Okay? And guess what? Give me the scripture where it says Intruding in those things which they have not seen It says something like that Colossians 2.18 Let no man beguile you of your reward the word, the word beguile means trick Let no man trick you of your reward You're only going to get a reward if you're keeping the commandments in the faith of Christ as an Israelite, you're going to get your reward. Go ahead. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility <laughs> and worshiping of angels. That means following men. Go ahead. Intruding into those things which he have not seen. You know what that part means? Intruding into those things which they have not seen. You ever hear these preachers say, I seen Moses. <laughs> you ain't seen no Moses. <laughs> you get Israelite brothers, you ask him for a precept of immaculate conception, he can't prove it. So you know what he says? God came down and showed me that. Are you kidding me? God did not come down, brother, and show you nothing. <laughs> and you know when they that's meant when they say that, that's to shut you down. But how are we commanded to read the Bible? Did it say precept should be? No. Must. 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 And if they ain't rolling like that, don't follow them. That's what happened. You get these crafty brothers. God came down <laughs> and he showed me. Are you kidding me? That's meant all you brothers and sisters who don't study, you the ones that's going to be deceived. Talking about Christ didn't have no daddy. He wasn't like us. You're going to be that spirit. 
an elder. Yeah. It's always the brother that's not keeping the commandments that sees the visions. Right. Mm -hmm. And exactly. God speaks to them. Yes. They, they don't have no beard on. They don't have no fringes. They don't observe the Sabbath, but God chose them to speak to them. Exactly. And nobody sees nothing <laughs> wrong with that. God always comes down to the disobedient brother or sister. Yeah. Always them. Yeah. But the one striving, the Lord don't deal with them. Nah, I don't want to talk to him. Remember, the sister that was the biggest troublemaker was the one that God was sending a dream. Remember? Exactly. God showed me a dream about Israel not in Christ. Six months. Y'all going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two years later. <laughs> and that was meant to scare people. Because she said, I'm a prophetess. If you got to tell people that you are a prophetess or a prophet, then guess what? You're not. You're not. <laughs> yeah, we just want to thank the sister for the blessing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> From there, let's go to Luke now. Luke chapter 1. In examining the birth of Christ, you got to start with the book of Luke. Matthew, you don't start with. You got to start with Luke. Luke chapter 1. Luke 1 verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin spouse to a man whose name was Joseph. So notice it says a spouse to a man named Joseph, right? Of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the virgin's name was Mary. Virgin means what? Young girl. Young girl. Young girl. Young girl of marriageable age. Go ahead. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. So that's where we went off from before. You sisters need to read that and go, I would love for the Lord to say this about me. Go ahead. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. What's the Hebrew name Hebrew name for Mary? Miriam. Miriam. Go ahead. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Thou shalt, meaning future tense, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Go ahead. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now let's pause right there a second. I just want to pause there. Read them, them two verses again, 32, 33. Mm -hmm. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Mm. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So his kingdom would what? Last for how long? Amen. Let's go to 2 Samuel 7. This is the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, and verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. Talking about David. Go ahead. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. And I will establish his kingdom. So what you want to look at there is thy seed, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. What is seed? Sir. Sir. Very good. Read on. So now initially you might think, because a Christian will say, this is talking about Solomon, David's son, Solomon. Watch this. He shall build a house for my name. They'll go see Solomon built a house in the name of the Lord. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. What's the word that lets you know it ain't talking about Solomon? Forever. forever. Because Solomon's throne was not forever. Didn't we just read he would establish whose throne forever? What well, we read in Luke, it said, "Enough, his kingdom there shall be what? No end. no end. Go ahead. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. Did Solomon commit iniquity? Yes. Yes, yes he did. Go ahead. 
I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Let me ask you a question. Solomon sinned, but was he chastised with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children? That means a, a whooping. Did that happen to Solomon? No. Who did that happen to? Christ. It happened to Christ. Okay, everybody see that? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go back now to Luke 1. So now, what we're reading here, only the elect is going to be able to see this. Yes, precept upon precept. Yes, we're not going to just sit here and say, God revealed it to us and that's it. Close the book. Right. No, that don't work here. That's white Jesus. Right, that's white Jesus. Jesus stuff. Too. <laughs> Where are we at back in Luke? 1 and verse 22 30, 30, 32 and 33 yeah. Luke 1 verse 32 He shall be great And shall be called the son of the highest And the Lord God shall give unto him The throne of his father David And he shall reign over the house Of Jacob forever And of his kingdom there shall be no end That's what was said in Samuel Everybody see that? Go ahead Then said Mary unto the angel How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. Stop. Yep. Wait a minute. That's the Christian. Let's jump back up to verse 27. I'm going to see who's thinking. Verse 27. To a vir um, Luke 1 verse 27. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now jump down to 34. Mm -hmm. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? So... How is she a spouse? And then she says she knows not a, a man. This is what they don't understand. Please. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. Remind. In Old Testament times, our, our forefathers used to promise our daughters off to our other men's sons. Exactly. So example, if I made an arrangement with some a brother to marry my daughter, I wouldn't tell her. But me and that particular brother would be in communication. Listen, we make an arrangement. You're going to marry my daughter when she reaches such and such an age. Okay. But I ain't letting her know. That's none of her business yet. I'm watching her brother. I'm watching her. Okay. <laughs> so that's why it says she was a spouse. But that, in 34, read that again. Verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Y'all see that? <laughs> Everybody understand? Yes. Go ahead. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Now here comes the Christian. There they go. Mm -hmm. there they go. The, the Muslims say that the angel was banging Mary in the back room. I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's adultery. <laughs> so in verse 34, she didn't know she was a, a spouse. A spouse. Right. right. She didn't know she was promised to her. Go ahead. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Mm -hmm. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So now, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and overshadow thee. What is the Holy Ghost talking about? That's right. Abiel? The <laughs> law. Right. This, the word is going to be fulfilled in her. Yes. Give me that in Acts 7. 51. 51. Come on, come on. We got to get that. Because they think angel came down and bang, 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 bang. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> Jerry Spence, We're going to the book of, of Acts chapter 7 and verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. So that's what we want, the Holy Ghost. Our fathers resisted the Holy Ghost, we don't. Which, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have not, and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. Here come. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Come on. Who have received who has received the law? Stop. Who has received the law? Go ahead. By the disposition by the disposition of angels and what? And have not kept it. That's what they were resisting. And have received the Law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost we were resisting. Because this Holy Ghost just confuses a Negro Latino, mainly you Latin tribes. Ah, uh, 
Ave Maria. The hell is this? They doing the sign of the cross? Um, Where we at? Uh, 35. 35. Where we at? I thought. Universe 35. Luke 1 35? Mm -hmm. Alright. Come on. We left Acts 751. We left Acts 751. We understand that the Holy Ghost is the law. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Mary, meaning that she would fulfill what was written. Mm -hmm. Luke 1 verse 35 and the angel answered and said unto her the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee mm -hmm. therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall, shall be, be called the Son of God right see it says shall be future tense mm -hmm. so the Holy Ghost that shall come upon her the power of the highest that would overshadow her is instructions in according to the law right. to direct Mary on what to do. Yes, and sir. as we read on, it's going to say that. Go ahead. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, what is verse 37 making reference to? <laughs> I'm all. John the Baptist's mother. Elizabeth. Right. Elizabeth being old, stricken in age. Because she said, how could I get pregnant? She said, I'm up in age. <laughs> and Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. Into a city of Judah. This where did she go? Who lived in the city of Judah? Who knows? Who knows? Joel. <coughs> Joseph also lived in the city of Judah. Right. Joseph also lived in the city of Judah. So now you got to ask yourself, self, why did Mary leave from Galilee and go into the city of Judah? Okay. The angel already told her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and overshadow you, meaning direct you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with, with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord so wait a minute. So when Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, does that mean she got pregnant? No. Oh, nice. No. She started to utter spiritual things according to the Lord regarding Mary and the coming of the Messiah. That's what happened. So this is an example of the Holy Ghost coming upon her. Go ahead. And she spake with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me. You see that? That the mother of my Lord. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost came on and showed her that the Lord was going to come through her cousin Mary. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Mm -hmm. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. So you want to highlight that word performance. That's an action word, a doing word, a verb. Okay, so everything that the angel told her, there was going to be a performance of what was told to her. So it didn't happen yet. She wasn't pregnant yet. So angel Gabriel didn't bang her. Right, yes, Gabriel banged her. <laughs> right, that didn't happen. There shall be a performance of those things, which was told to me. Be. Okay, right. Come on. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Mm -hmm. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. So notice, as Mary speaking, this is the Spirit of God speaking through Mary. Go ahead. He has filled the hungry with good things, 
and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, mm. as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Y'all see that? To Abraham and to his seed forever. Go ahead. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. So Mary stayed in the same area where Joseph lived for about three months. You got to be able to connect the dots, what's going on here. From there, let's go to Luke chapter 3 and verse 23. Luke 3 verse 23. Zip. Mm -hmm. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Eli. So now, y'all see that as was supposed in, in uh, parentheses? That was added later. When you get a Bible dictionary, I believe it's under, look up italics or mm, parentheses. One of those words, it tells you all those things were added later in the scriptures. So read it again. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Eli. Joseph, I want you to look at this. The son of Joseph, which was the son of Eli. Hold your finger right there. Yeah. Go to Matthew chapter 1. And I want verse 16. Pay close attention. Matthew 1 verse 16. And Jacob begat, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Read it again. And Jacob begat Joseph. Stop. Mm -hmm. So who was Joseph's father? Jacob. Jacob. Now this Jacob is not the Jacob that you read about in Genesis. His name, his daddy's name was Jacob also. Y'all see that? Yes. But there's a problem here. Go back to Luke now. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 3. Verse 23. Verse 23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Eli. It says the son of Eli. Matthew said he was the son of Jacob. Luke says the son of Eli. Who has one of those red small Bibles? Yeah. Shark you. Get yours. There should be a number next to Eli name in those small Bibles. We're at Luke 3. Luke 3, 23. And read it loud. Right. It's a number. What number is it? The number is... <laughs> Sorry. Okay, the number is six. Right, so read on the mic what they can hear, what that number six says next to the son of Eli. The number six for the son of Eli says, son-in-law. Son-in-law, son-in-law. You got one of your Bible, y'all, yeah. What you got? It says, it says the same thing. It says, son-in-law. It has, it has, where it says son of Eli, then there's a number above it, which is a reference or a footnote, and it explains what that means. It says son-in-law. So Luke 3 is given a genealogy of who? Mary. 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 Luke 3 is breaking down Mary, Mary's family line. Okay? So now, let's go to Matthew 1 and 1. Hey, um, Elder, yeah. I just Googled what you said about the italics. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of conversations here where they stress. <coughs> now get a chance, Google it, and it tells you that the italics were added to put emphasis on it. Mm. Right. Okay, just Google it. I just typed that in. Italics added to that, and a whole bunch of um, dialogue comes up on it. Exactly. So in the original text, there was no as was supposed. Right. That was not that. Okay? So now, we're in Matthew chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 1. And the reason you always, I stressed that at the past, the day after the Passover, when we had the, 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 the confusion. Yeah, that sounded, when I, brother crept in on the wares. Like Christians, they always want you to start with verse 18. Read verse 18. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Stop. That's where a Christian will take you. Because they don't want to start at verse. There's a reason. 
They don't want to start at verse 1. Read Matthew 1 and 1. Matthew 1 verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. What does the word generation mean? Can we look that word up? You got it ASAP? I want to look that word up. Generation. It says all people living at the same time of approximate the same age, group of genetically related organisms. That's what we want. <laughs> A group of genetically related organisms. Meaning all these people are related that we're about to read. These is his daddies. Right. His forefathers. Right. Gene, gene related means sperm. Right. Like what we read in uh, Samuel's, Second Samuel's, mm -hmm. which shall proceed from thy bowels. Right. So you go, well, let's start at verse 1. No, 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 no. Let's start at 18. No. We're going to start at verse 1. Come on. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ. So it's going to give you the generation of Jesus Christ, the genealogy of Jesus the Christ. <clears throat> the son of David. The son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac begat Jacob. So now it's breaking it down. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Come on. And Jacob begat Judas. Now that Judas is who? Judah. Judah. Go ahead. And Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. Come on. And Judas begat Phares and Zerah of Tamar. And Phares begat Ezron. And Ezron begat Aaron. And Aaron begat Aminadab. And Aminadab begat Nehassan. Stop. I want you to highlight Aminadab. There's a reason I want you to highlight Aminadab. Go to Exodus 6.23. Exodus 6, verse 23. And Aaron, yeah, Exodus 6, verse 23. And Aaron took him Elisheba, daughter of Aminadab, Sister of Neashan to wife. And she bare him Nadab and Abayu, Eliezer and Itamar. So I just want y'all to see the name there, Aminadab. Okay, one of his daughters married Aaron. Now you might ask yourself, self, what does this got to do with anything? It has a lot to do. Aminadab lived during the Exodus when we came out of Egypt. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. Deuteronomy 18 verse 18 I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren stop I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren brethren now this prophet he's referring to is who Christ, Christ. so the Lord is telling Moses I'm going to raise up a prophet from among their brethren which brethren we know Christ came from what tribe Judah. Judah. Now you got to stipulate who of Judah at that time did he come through? It was Aminadab's line. That's why in Matthew 1 it mentions him. That was the line of Judah. Read again. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee. And will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass, and whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Meaning I will destroy him. Let's go back to Matthew 1. What you got, y'all, stop? Right, let's get that one. Go to, uh, no, 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 let's get that one later. We're going to get that one later. Uh, go back to Matthew 1. Matthew 1, verse 4. Matthew 1, verse 4. And Aaron begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nisan, and Nisan begat Salmon. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rakab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Come on. And Solomon begat Reboam, and Reboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat Josephat, and Josephat begat John, and John begat Ozias. And Ozias begat Joatham, and Joatham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias, and Ezekias begat Manassas, and Manassas begat Ammon, and Ammon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jeconias, and his brethren, 
about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Stop. I want you to highlight the name Jeconiah. You know the damage one ignorant Negro can do? Mm -hmm. That's a dangerous thing. That's, That's a, a dangerous thing. thing. A Negro will search things out to cause destruction. Read that again, verse 11. And Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Go ahead. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Jubabel. From there, let's go to um, Chronicles. Ah, uh, Chronicles. Three, seven, two, yes, seven, two, yes, that's it. <laughs> Let's get the breakdown on Jeconiah. Which one? Uh, I believe it's is it first? Three. Uh, first Chronicles 3 7. Yeah, first Chronicles 3 17. First Chronicles. First Chronicles 3, I want to start at verse 16. We want 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. First Chronicles 3, verse 16. And the sons of Jehoiakim. And the sons of Jehoiakim. Watch this. Jeconiah. Yes. Jeconiah. His son. His son. Zedekiah, his son. And Ze Zedekiah, his son. And the sons of Jeconiah. Asir, Salathiel, his son. So you see, uh, Jeconiah had Asir and Salathiel, his son. Out of those two sons, which one did Christ come through? Salathiel. Salathiel. But notice above it. Read verse 16 again. And the sons of Jehoiakim. And the sons of Jehoiakim. Very important. Go ahead. Jeconiah, his son. Zedekiah, his son. So now, watch this. Go to Jeremiah 36. Mm -hmm. Here's what one ignorant Negro will do to destroy things. <laughs> Pay close attention. Because they don't keep the commandments, they will not get the understanding. Don't want it. Right, you don't want it. We're study. Ah, uh, yeah, 30 and 31. Jeremiah 36, verse 30. Therefore, thus said the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat and in the night to the frost. So now, the unlearned is right, mainly the Negro, because it ain't the white man that goes try to be deep, it's the Negro. See? Christ can't be of uh, the throne of David. It said, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David. And his, because he was killed, and his dead body shall be cast out into the day to the heat. Now, when Matthew, when Christ was born, who of Judah was sitting on the throne? Now see who's thinking. I'm seeing who's thinking. Who was sitting on the throne of Judah? Only one hand is up. Four. You need four. Okay. Let me take a guess. Oh, Azariah's hand is up. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right. Herod was ruling. And Herod was what? He's Esau. He's Edomite. So who of Judah was on the throne? Nobody. Now, I want you to hold this. Give me Isaiah 714. Hold that. We coming right back to this stuff. Isaiah 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Now that word virgin just means a uh, young girl of marriageable age. Go ahead. And bear a son. Mm -hmm. And shall call his name Emmanuel. Come on. Butter and honey shall he eat. That he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Come on. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good. What? Here's the part I want you to look at. The land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. What does that part mean right there? <laughs> the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Ramiah. Neither kingdom would be ruling in the land. Right. Neither the kingdom of Judah nor the kingdom of Israel would have a king when Christ is born. There would be no king of our people. That's what it's saying. That's the same thing now. Back to Jeremiah 36 and 30. Jeremiah 36 verse 30. Therefore thus saith the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. He shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat and in the, in the night to the frost. So nobody descending from Jehoiakim would be 
on the throne. That's all the same could be no king. That's all the same. But did he have to say he had children? Go back to Chronicles now. Well, where was that? First Chronicles? 316? Yep. And 17. 17. First Chronicles 316. And the sons of Jehoiakim, Jeconiah his son, Zedekiah his son, and the sons of Jeconiah, Asir, Salathiel his son. So y'all see that? He had sons, but guess what? They didn't sit on the throne. <coughs> now let's go back to Matthew 1. And back to verse 11. I'm taking you on a long route. You have to. Matthew 1 and 11 again. Matthew 1 verse 11. And Josiah begat Jeconias and his brethren about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel. That's what we just read in the book of Chronicles. Go ahead. And Salathiel begat Zerubbabel. Now, which of them was sitting on the throne? Was any of them the th sitting on the throne? No. no, not even Zerubbabel. What was Zerubbabel's title? Governor. Governor. Okay, come on. And Zerubbabel begat Abia, and Abiah begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadak, and Sadak begat Akim, and Akim begat Eliud, and Eliud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathen, and Mathen begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. So y'all see that? You... <laughs> It's telling you right there, all his forefathers down to Joseph. Then comes Christ. So if you want to get to it quick, say, let's start a verse. What verse is that? 16. Before you get to 8, I'm talking on when you're on the street. Right. Okay, you might want to hit verse 1, but then jump right to verse 16 again. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who was called Christ. Boom, that's going to seal it right there. That's going to set the foundation right there. They, you, you putting them in a bag, they're not going to be able to escape from. Hold it. If, if Christ only came through Mary without Joseph, why would it mention Joseph in this verse? Right. right. Okay, if, 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 Christ, if, if Christ just popped up in Mary, what would be the significance of mentioning Joseph right here to oh. say that he was the husband of Mary? Mm -hmm. Why would you even mention that? Mm -hmm. If we're reading about the genealogy of Christ, why would you mention Joseph? Exactly. See, people were willfully ignorant. That's what mm -hmm. it is. They're willfully stupid. They want to be stupid. <laughs> Come on. Matthew, Luke, Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 1 verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Now that's very important. Why do y'all think it's mentioning the captivity? Read verse 21 for them. Verse 21? Mm -hmm. Verse 21. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now jump right back up to 17. Let's see who got the thought. 17. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So from Babylon unto Christ, what happened? Mm. Bezalel. Captivity. Let's hear it. What? Like what? You know, we kept being carried away into captivity. Like who? What? What are we talking about? Mm. The, the point of saving. Take the mic. Take, give him the mic. Give him the mic. Save us from those captivities. That's what captivities? The last one. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> Isaac, take the mic. Take the mic. <laughs> captivities after Babylon was the, the Persian Mede. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? From the Persian Mede was the Greek, you see that? Rome, and now here in America. No, no, we didn't get to America Rome, here. Not no America. Rome. 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 When Christ was born, who was in power? Rome. 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 So from Babylon, we went into the Persian Mede captivity. From Persian Mede, we went to the Greek captivity. From the Greek captivity, we went to the Roman captivity, which is when Christ was born. Can we read verse 17 again? I'm getting a headache. Verse 17. So all the generations from Abraham 
to David are 14 generations. Mm. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So why do we, why is it important that they mention that, Leon? Because we was in captivity. And? And he's gonna save us from And he was gonna save us from captivity. That's why they mention the captivities, because verse 21 tells us he's coming to save his people. So that excludes all other races. Yep. You could just kill it and slaughter a Christian right here. Don't even go. Let's stay in Matthew chapter 1. Right. You ain't got to go all over precepts. Right. right here. Stay here. Ooh. Come on. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Stop. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Go ahead. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy of the Holy Ghost. That's what confuses a Christian. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now a Christian will stop you right there and go, ah, 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 hold on. That means before they had sex, brother. Yep. Before they had sex. But always ask them this. What is the customs and traditions and the laws regarding marriage? We, remember we asked the brother that on the Sabbath. Cool. I don't know. I tell you, brothers, before you get to the New Testament, you should. it's best for you to have a thorough understanding. If you ain't got it yet, you're going to get it. So hang around. Understand you got to read that Old Testament. I'm going to take you through it. That's what we're here for. Now, let's back up. Let's go to, um, bear with me a second. Look, go to Luke 14 and 8. I'm going to start there. Luke 14 and 8. I'm going to show you something. Before they came together, let's see what that's talking about. Luke 14 and 8. That's all, all I want is verse 8. Luke 14. Verse so write this down. The customs of marriage. Highlight that part. Luke 14 verse 8. When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest the more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. So now, what you want to, you might ask yourself, that's a parable, what are you talking about? We want to establish that Israel, um, in Israel there were weddings. You want to establish that. There were weddings. From there, go to John 2, verse 1 and 2. All I want is down to 2. 1 and 2. I'm building. Bear with me. I'm just building a story for y'all. John 2, verse 1. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. So there was a marriage. Go ahead. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. You know, that was it. That's it. So now, we establish wedding, we establish marriage. I just wanted y'all to see that. Write that down, highlight it, whatever you got to do. Now, let's go to Judges chapter 15 and verse 1. Like I said, I'm taking you on a long route. When y'all on the street, you can't go to a, it's just too much. Just get to the point and slam a Christian. <laughs> you should have fun doing that. Exactly. Yeah. Judges 15 and 1. Now when I read the history, this is about our forefather Samson of the tribe of Dan. Okay? Who was about to get married. He gave a riddle. Judges 15 verse 1. But it came to pass within a while after in the time of wheat harvest. Samson got mad because his his, what's her name? What's the word? Not, uh, the woman espoused to him revealed the secret of the riddle. So he had to go out and do a task. The Philistines said he had to go out. Who remembers what he had to do? Ramiah? Yeah, anybody who was bigger out, they'd get 30 changes of clothes. They'd get 30 changes of clothes. So he went out and killed some Africans for them clothes. So now he's pissed off. He's coming back. Verse 15 again. But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with the kid. Notice it says his wife with a kid. And he said, I will go into my wife, into the chamber. Into the chamber. You want to highlight that right there. Into the chamber. Go ahead. But her father would not suffer him to go in. Now when you read on, the father explains to Samson. 
We thought you were gone. You didn't want, didn't want it no more. I gave it to your friend. Samson gets mad again. He was already promised to the woman. Okay? That's why I said he would go into the chamber. Con in the chamber, they consummated the marriage. They had sex in the chamber. From there. Let's go to, stay in Judges. Go to, I wrote chapter 6. Let me, no, Tobit, I'm sorry. Tobit chapter 6. Tobit, Tobit, Tobit. Tobit 6, verse 12. And the maid is fair and wise. Talking about uh, Sarah, go ahead. Now therefore hear me, and I will speak to her father. And when we return from Rages, we will celebrate the marriage. We will celebrate the marriage. You want to highlight that marriage, write it down, go ahead. For I know that Raguel cannot marry her to another according to the law of Moses. Mm, according to the law of Moses, go ahead. But he shall be guilty of death, because the right of inheritance doth rather appertain to thee than to any other. So Tobias was of closer kin to her. They were of the same tribe. So in terms of inheritance, it said he is next to marry her. Go ahead, watch this. And the young man answered the angel, I have heard, Brother Azarias, that this maid had been given to seven men who all died in the marriage chamber. You want to highlight that? Write it down. Marriage chamber. In the wedding feast, during the marriage, there was a marriage chamber where during this festival, this feast, the man and woman went in together. They went in and cuz had sex. Let me make it simple for you. From there, let's go to chapter 7. Stay in Tobit. Tobit 7, verse 13 to 15. I'm taking you on a long route. Tobit 7, verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses. Take her after the law of Moses. Very important, because you get some people that say, No, you ain't got to do that. It says after the law of Moses. Go ahead. And lead her away to thy father, and he blessed them. Watch this. And called Edna his wife, and took paper, and did write an instrument of covenants, and sealed it. So that was after the law of Moses. Anybody that tells you it's not doesn't know the Bible, mm -hmm. and rejects doctrine, rejects scripture. Go ahead. After Raguel called his wife Edna, and said unto her, Sister, Prepare another chamber. Prepare another chamber. Here it comes. Go ahead. And bring her in thither, which when she had done as he had bidden her, she brought her thither. And she wept, and she received the tears of her daughter, and said unto her, Be of good comfort, my daughter. The Lord of heaven and earth give thee joy for this thy sorrow. Be of good comfort, my daughter. Now, chapter 8, verse 1. Chapter 8, verse 1. And when they had supped, they brought Tobias in unto her. So now, now she's already in this other chamber. Now the, now the father and mother bring Tobias into this chamber. Now, from there, let's jump down to verse 19. Mm, yes, yes, read verse 4, I'm sorry. We're going to jump down to verse 4. Verse 4. And after that, they were both shut in together. Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise and let us pray that God would have pity on us. So why was there a bed there? There was a bed there. What do you think they did in the bed? <laughs> they had sex. Jump down to 19. Verse 19. And he kept the wedding feast 14 days. So this celebration lasted 14 days. Now... From there, our people know how to get down. They know how to have a party. From there, let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 10, verse 1. I'm just getting some more precepts for y'all. The angel, the angel didn't say, move, nigga. Right. I'm, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this thing. I got first dibs. What the hell is this? 2 Ezra 10 and 1. 2 Ezra 10, verse 1. And so, and it so came to pass. Now this is a vision that he sees that a woman is telling to him, but I tell him to the prophet Ezra, but I just want you to see the words. And it so came to pass that when my son was entered into his, into his wedding chamber, 
He fell down and died. All we went out of there, wedding chamber. That's the same chamber that Tobias and Sarah entered into and rose out of the bed. Everybody with me on the same page? Yes. yes. Okay. From there, let's go. Mm, I know I wrote it down somewhere. Bear with me. Give me Deuteronomy 22. Now you might ask yourself, what else happened during this wedding chamber, during the wedding feast? Here's the answer. Deuteronomy 22 verse 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Now this was during the what? Who, who can fill in the gap? When did this play, take place? When he went in unto Malachi? In the marriage chamber. In the marriage chamber, in the wedding chamber. He said, this woman is not a virgin, she's a hoe. <laughs> He's bringing up an evil name against her. Watch this. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. So what you want out of there is the tokens of the damsel's virginity. Yeah. What's that? Oh, that's what I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> the hymen was uh, broken in And what did they take? What did the parents take? What did they bring? The blood, the cloth. They brought the sheet. The sheet. That was on the bed. That was on the bed. Read that again. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. Right. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth. Spread the what? The cloth. Spread the what? The cloth. Mm -hmm. Before the elders of the city. And the elders of, the, of that city shall take that man and chastise him. They beat the hell out of him mm -hmm. because he lied. They brought the sheet, the cloth that, his, that their daughter was a virgin. The blood was on the sheet because the hymen had broken. That's what was in the wedding chamber, the marriage chamber. The father and mother kept that as proof. Everybody understand that? Yes. Was that it? No. Go ahead. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel because he had brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. And she shall be his wife, and he may not put her away all his days. Y'all see that? So now, during the wedding feast, right, which could last seven days or 14 days, whatever it is, it depends on the money that you had to spend. During the wedding feast, you had a marriage chamber where the bride and the groom went in. Inside the marriage chamber was a what? Bed. A bed. And what did the mother and father take out of the marriage chamber? The cloth. The, cloth. the tokens of which had the tokens of her virginity on it. Now, let's go back to Matthew. Mm -hmm. So now, if you don't know that, when you get to Matthew 118, you already got white man Jesus on your brain. Mm -hmm. Done. You done. You finished because you're listening to Creflo Dollar. John Hagee, Jimmy Swaggett, Rex Humbard, Juanita Bynum, the devil. the devil. This is an example of why precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. You're getting it straight up. Come on, Matthew, Matthew 1, 18. verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Stop. What happened now? Only Ezekiel got a clue. Oh, get a lie. He got his hand up. Say what? Oh. You answer. What happened? You weren't paying attention. Okay, Tony. He's still fighting. Oh. She's not. I don't see no Um. Well, they had sex already. Right. They had sex already. The deed was done. Before they came, now she's already pregnant. 
Before they came together, before what's the fill it in, fill it in, Robert. You came together. Before they came together, fill it in for us. Robert. Before we Robert. take the mic. That's the mic. <laughs> Before they had the whole ceremony, they already had sex. What do you mean ceremony? We're talking about uh, a priest threw rice at them? No, the, uh, the whole ceremony. The, what do you mean? The, the ceremony for... You gotta explain to me, I'm dumb. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Who can help him? Uh, brother behind Tony. The brother behind Tony, yes. <laughs> Before they had the whole ceremony of the virgin of... To, uh, the exchange of the virgin of... To, uh, to, the exchange of the virgin. Uh, when, the exchange when of they the went virgin. The, when they went to the Tokens. chamber, they Tokens. had the whole club. No, they had sex, and then the parents came in to the, take the clothes. The virgin of the, uh, the tokens of virginity. Okay, very good. Okay, I'll roll with that. I'll, I'll roll with that. Before the wedding feast, before the wedding chamber, before the tokens of virginity were even taken, she was already pregnant. So now you know what kind of embarrassment that is? See, a lot of you are young in here. But those of you that's his age, <laughs> up there, back in the day, it was a shame. You, didn't have, you did not get pregnant and not have no husband. That was unheard of. Now it's okay. Right, now it's, it's like second nature. You gotta be my age to understand it. Right now it's nothing. Right now it's, it's, it's an everyday thing. Exactly. We're going to get it right. But back in the day, I tell y'all, my mother, I used to see it and hear it all the time. You better not be doing nothing. You Whoever got pregnant, they shipped them down to South Carolina. Well, that's what happened. They shipped them out of the state. You got to go because it's a shame on the family. Read that again? Bro. Yes. It's, it's, it's true what he said because in Haiti, in Haiti, if the woman got pregnant, that was back then. Today is different because now they are Americanized. But back then, if the woman get pregnant, they force the young man to marry her. Oh, oh they're gonna, the parents are gonna kill her. Right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna kill her. That's Wait, true. say that again, say that again. Hey, hey, if the young woman, if you pregnant the young woman, you gotta marry her. If you don't marry her, her parents are gonna kill you. Is <laughs> <laughs> it the truth? Right. Yeah, that don't do that no more. That's what it should be like. It's called the shotgun wedding. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, the shotgun was on him. <laughs> because, uh, because that was so serious in Haiti. Guess what? If that man didn't have no money, their parents of their daughter would pay for their wedding. That's how deep the Haitian people went in. If that, uh, like if that man was a poor man, he could not marry that. They would spend the money. Make sure they get married. Right. Sure. Check that out. So back in verse 18 again. Was it 18? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. But as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together. Now we understand now before they came together. Go ahead. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. She was found pregnant according to the law of the prophecy that was given her. Go ahead. Then Joseph, her husband, being then Joseph, her what? Husband. Husband, so it's already letting you know who the daddy is. <laughs> Joseph, her husband, go ahead. Being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Now, why was he thinking like along these lines? Because it was what? Shame. It was a shame. Here he is of the house of David. He's supposed to be held in honor. Here come this woman here about to marry. She already pregnant. And now, how her father and mother, wait, wait a minute. I promise you, my daughter, right. to marry her on a particular day. You already jumping the gun? What the hell is this? So this dude is like, damn, I'm going to do. Yes. Or well, someone can make an accusation that is not his. Exactly. They'll stone him. Exactly. That could happen. Read that again. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Send her, send her to the land of Asher. Get out of here. Go, go somewhere. You ashamed. Go ahead. Down south. Go down south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, 
They are not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Meaning is according to prophecy, is of the law. Okay, that's what the angel is saying, telling them. So no, notice it said Joseph thought about these things. Some of they think he did. He didn't do it. He was thinking, what can I do to get out of this mess I caused? That's why he was. That's what he was thinking on. Okay, read on. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Y'all see that? So now we understand why. He would save his people from their sins because of verse what? 17. Yeah, Read verse 17 again. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. So now, let's get to... Yes, Ariel. Um, I want to reply in uh, verse 20. There's two things actually... Um, where it says Joseph, thou son of David. Uh huh. Anything in verse one, it's called, it says the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David. Right. That's a good point. Everybody heard what he said in verse one. It says um, Jesus Christ, the son of David, and he also called Joseph that in verse twenty. Joseph, thou son of David, showing you that lineage. Now it also says, fear not to take Mary. Thy wife. How right. call her virgin? Right. The angel called Mary his wife. The angel knew that Joseph already laid down with her. That's why it didn't say, fear not to take unto thee Mary the virgin. He already called her his wife. Um, when we read in Matthew, when we read in Matthew, uh, Matthew 1 and, and 18, when he said that Joseph wasn't willing to make a, a public example, right? When, when you go back to Deuteronomy 22, what we just read, when we keep reading it, tell you what that public example it was. All right? Um, I'm going to read it. Go back to Deuteronomy 22 and verse, verse 20. Because remember, we were just reading about the token of virginity, right? Mm -hmm. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 20. But if this thing be true, meaning if if this woman, you know, she, she you can't find the token of virginity, <laughs> right? We did again, y'all. What's up? But if this thing be true, meaning you couldn't find the token of virginity, read on. And the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, read on. Then shall they bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, read on. Because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shall thou put evil away from among you. So this is the judgment for a sister that going that living in a father house and having sex. A sister that go that living in a father house and get pregnant. The judgment is that she she should be put to death. All right. So when we read in Matthew, when Joseph didn't want to make a private, um, a public, public example, example, that's what that meant. All right. It mean that Joseph did that. That what would have happened to Mary if right. Joseph didn't take her to be his wife. All right. Very good. That's a good point. That's a ceremony. What this proves also, what do Christians say is fornication according to the Bible? Isn't that they just did here? Yeah. They had sex before marriage. That's not fornication according to the Bible. Right. This destroys that also. So, read that again. Matthew 1, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. So, like Deacon Malachi was saying, meaning he didn't want her to be stoned mm -hmm. because they would, it would look like she's a whore. Go ahead. Was minded to put her away privately. He wanted to put her away privately, secretly, get rid of her. And while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. So you already want, you want to stress that on the street. Mary thy wife. Why is the angel calling her Mary thy wife? 
So the, the angel knew something that people don't know today. They already had sex. Yes, right. Go ahead. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Right. Love, are you going to say something? Yes. Uh, go back to 18. I'm going to ask you a question. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Stop right there. Why that Christian will never understand what we just, what the elder just went all around the corner to make us understand? When you read that part, read it again. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Any brother could have it? Go ahead, brother Omar. Uh, Matthew is saying only those with the wisdom of the Bible is going to understand the birth of Christ. That's it. Because to be wise, you have to learn the laws. You have to know the laws of marriage. It said these things I'm about to tell you is about the law. These prophecies, you have to learn these laws. How Christ was come about. How Christ going to be born. You have to know. You have to know these things. That's why the elders went through all these scriptures to us to make you wise. To understand Matthew 18. You understand? That's why you went to all the corner to make your spirit wise. Say, now I got, the, I got the tools to fight the Christians. You understand? Because a Christian will read this. This unwise. A Christian ain't no wise. So how would he understand that? Wait a minute. How in the world could a Christian try to tell you anything about the birth of Jesus when they don't even know who they are in the Bible? That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. From there, let's go to Hebrews 2.16. Right. Now these are the scriptures you want to, you can hit quickly on the street. But don't run from Matthew 1. <laughs> you just got to make sure you hit him with that verse 16. Don't run from it. Hebrews 2 verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Stop. <laughs> he took not on him the nature of angels. Meaning, who can fill in the gap for me? An angel. Let's think about an angel for a second. Does an angel have an earthly father? No. no. Does an angel need men and women to have sex? Huh? No. To conceive? No. Angels are not created like that. Read it again. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Meaning, he was not immaculately born. I'm going to say it again. Sure. Meaning, he was not immaculately born. Because the Most High created angels in that fashion, okay? Meaning there's no sex involved in all that. The Most High created them. All right, read it again. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Took on him the sperm of Abraham, go ahead. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren. And you want to stress that right there. It behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. What you got? Deuter Deuteronomy chapter 18. We read it earlier. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. Like unto Moses. How was Moses born? <laughs> Mother and father. Mother and father. Moses wasn't immaculately born. Everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Let's go back. Got one more for you. What you got? Corinthians, the, the glory of the celestial. Okay. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 39. It's a couple of verses. I'm going to read it quick. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies. Celestial means angelic bodies. Angels. Right. And bodies terrestrial. Terrestrial means of what? Earthly. 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 Of the earth. Terrain, right. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is is another. Right. So you can't mix those two things together. For if an angel had sex with Mary, she'd be blown up. <laughs> the Most High is showing you that each of these, uh, that each of these flesh have their own order. Mm -hmm. The Most High is not the author of confusion for the dumb, stupid Christian that think, or anybody else with that dumb thought in their mind, it's pathetic for them to think that the Most High is going to mix up 
his creations. The Most High don't deal that way. I want 16 again. Verse 16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Meaning he came out of the lineage, the generations of Abraham, the generation of Abraham. Sperm. Sperm. Go ahead. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. So he was made like unto his brethren. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. He couldn't be a merciful and, hate and faithful high priest if he wasn't made like you and me. If he was celestial, he wouldn't understand temptation. He wouldn't understand trials. That's right. He wouldn't understand love and hate. He understood all that though. Why? Because he was made like you and I. Go ahead. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Come on. For in that, he himself hath suffered being tempted. He was tempted. Angels are not tempted. Oh, amen. <laughs> you cannot tempt an angel. <laughs> Read it again. For in that, he himself hath suffered being tempted. He is able to succor them. Meaning comfort them. That are tempted. That are tempted because why? He went through it too. 40 days and 40 nights. Okay. From there. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, yeah. chapter 7. This was Lava's favorite one. Run for the hills. Right. Man, when you, you ain't got after this one, you really ain't got to go no place else. That's why I took this book out. They said, take out that book. Thank you. Take it out. This is a straight shot right to the dome. Damn. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 1. I myself also am a mortal man. Now this is Solomon talking about himself. Like to all, and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth. Talking about Adam. And then my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of ten months. So he said it was fashioned in his flesh in ten months. Go ahead. Being compacted in blood. Of the seed of man. Of the seed of man. Mm -hmm. And the pleasure that came with sleep. The pleasure that came with sleep means the baby was doing what? Sleeping. Sleeping. Sleeping in the womb. So notice that of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. Read on. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth. And fell up, because remember, like we read during the time of Passover, the women, how did they give birth? Down. They wanted stools. They wanted stools. Go ahead. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of light nature. Wow. And the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. Mm -hmm. I was nursed in swaddling clothes and that with cares. Like Christ was nursed in swaddling clothes. Right. Luke 2 7. Mm -hmm. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. Y'all see that? Read that again. Mm. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. Go ahead. For all men have one entrance into life and the light going out. So y'all want to hit them points right there. <laughs> all men got the same entrance. So don't come with, but he was immaculate. That ain't what it said here. Now, okay, so let's say somebody want to be slick mm -hmm. and say, well, that was only during Solomon's time. <laughs> Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. For he hath given me certain knowledge. For God hath given Solomon certain knowledge. Of the things that are. Namely to know how the world was made. And the operation of the elements. Watch this. The beginning, ending, and mist of the times. The alterations of the turning of the sun. And the change of seasons. So with all this wisdom Solomon had. Back to verse 5 and 6 again. Verse 5. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. Solomon knew the beginning, the middle, and the end. So he could safely say, mm -hmm. no king had any other birth than my type of birth. Go ahead. For all men have one entrance into life. He could safely say it. The Lord showed him the beginning of all things, the middle of all things, and the end of all things. Go ahead. For all men have one entrance into life, and the light going out. Come on. Wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me. I called upon God and the spirit of wisdom came to me. So he was able to safely say all these things. So this chapter right here is a heavy chapter to smash that immaculate conception garbage. From there, 
Let's go to Leviticus 15, 16. Y'all know this one. About the seed, the seed of David, the seed of Abraham. Leviticus 15, 16 explains the seed in detail. <clears throat> Leviticus 15, verse 16. And if any man's seed of copulation. Copulation means what? Sex. Read it again. And if any man's seed of copulation. So what is the seed of copulation? Sperm. Sperm. Go ahead. Go out from him. Then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the evening. Go ahead. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. Y'all see that? Go to Romans 1 and 3. Now y'all want that part to explain seed because Christians are dumb. When you read the word seed, they go, uh -huh. how do you know that's talking about sperm? You're just nasty. <laughs> now you go to Leviticus 15, 16. Romans 1, verse 3. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Y'all see that? According to the flesh. Now watch this. Get me... Galatians 4 and 4. Galatians 4 verse 4. I'm going to see who's thinking. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth the son made of a woman. Stop. Made of a woman. Go ahead. Made under the law. Made of a woman, made under the law. Who can explain? Mm. Made of a woman, made under the law. Made of a woman, made under the law. <laughs> what part you want to start with first? Hands went down. Out of that verse, where do you want to start with first? Get a lie. Made under the law. Right, you want to start with made under the law. Because it says Christ was made under the law. You got to go back to what the law says about what? Childbirth. 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 Read the whole verse again. When the fullness of the time has come. What's the fullness of time? Nine months. Ten months. That nine, ten months. You got a reference now. You can go to Wisdom of Solomon 7. One down. It tells you the time with the fullness of time. Go ahead. But when the fullness of the time has come, God sent forth the son made of a woman. Made under the law. So what does the law say about childbirth? <laughs> That's what you got to explain. What does the law say about childbirth? How does it begin? Let's start there. Where would you go, Joel? I'll go to Leviticus chapter 12 verse no. 5. Wait, what does it say? When a woman conceives seed. No. I want to start somewhere else before that. Oh, we just read it! Ezekiel. Leviticus 15, 16. Leviticus 15, 16. Let's explain that seed first. Now what you coming with? You eating? But come on. Get yourself together. Stand up. Come on. Where's the mic? How come he has no mic? Why you keep What is wrong with you guys? They went to sleep. Leviticus chapter 12 and 1 says, When a woman conceives seed, to conceive seed, a man has to shoot off in her. Okay, so now we wanted to start with Leviticus 15 and 16, right? Right? Right, Joel? We want to start with 15 and 16. So now. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, everybody getting all squeamish about what he said because you have to. I'm glad he said it that way because the immaculate conception garbage must be wiped out of your head. Right. Okay? <laughs> Now, okay, you get the woman, right? You have sex with her, the seed goes forth, right? Now what? She gets pregnant, what does the law say? Mm, yeah. As soon as she gets pregnant, there must be a marriage, no, as soon as she gets pregnant, Oh, damn, you got Have a seat. <laughs> I'm talking about the, 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 the childbirth now. Oh. Uh, Zakai. Oh. 
Okay, now tell me, we established that already. Something else. Okay. <laughs> Leon. The baby has to be nursed. We ain't get to the baby yet. Dad, come on. Made under the law. Ezekiel. Uh, that one Tyson made and that one lay with her. We got that already. We established that. We already had the seed part. She's pregnant. Now what? I'm gonna help us. Um, she can't uh, have sex with her husband until uh, the she has to the that. Depending on the child, boy or girl. Okay, that's what I wanted to get to. Depending on the child, but male or female, if it's a boy child, she cannot have sex for how long? If it's a girl child, she cannot have sex for how long? 80 dollars. If it's a boy child, what has to happen on the eighth day? He must be circumcised. And then what has to be offered? It must be a sacrifice for her. It says as if for her purification. Thank you. Back to Galatians 4 now. All that plays a part in Galatians 4 and 4. Galatians 4 verse 4. For when the fullness of the time has come, God sent forth the Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Where in the law will you find immaculate conception? Can somebody help me in the law? Where is that in the law? Uh, it's nowhere in there. Here's, that's another headbanger. Here's, let's get some more. God has to come and tell it to you. Yeah, God. Now, the brother says, God said it to me. Now you shut down. Here we go, John 7, 42. You got all them scriptures. Right. But he's come with, with some Shazam. Yeah. <laughs> John 7, 42. Like I said, I'm taking you on a long route. But these, the ones I'm giving you are not as quick ways to hit it on the street. Come on. John 7, verse 42. Have not the scriptures said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and yep. out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? Y'all see that? Does not what? Have not the scriptures said that Christ cometh of the seed of David? Y'all see what the scriptures say? That Christ comes of the seed of David. So every time when y'all read seed, you want to hit what verse, Josiah? Where you want to go? He's lost in a sauce. Yahshua? Leviticus 15, 16. Leviticus 15, 16 to explain seed. From there, Acts 13, 23. When y'all hit those seed scriptures, keep Leviticus 15, 16 in your hip pocket. Pow! It's going to shut them down. Oh, shoot. Okay. What did I say, go? Acts 13, 23. Acts 13, verse 23. Hey, that's it. Acts 13, verse 23. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. Of this man's seed. How are you going to get around that and say immaculate conception? Of this man's seed. What you want to hit him with, jo Josiah? Leviticus 15 and 16. Leviticus 15, 16. If any man's seed of copulation comes out. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> Read verse 23 again. <laughs> again. again. <laughs> of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel, a savior. Y'all see that according to his promise? I'm going to see who's thinking. We read something in Matthew. I don't want to say too much. Who can precept according to his promise with something? I say I'm going to have to get on more detail. Oh, Hananiah's hand is up. Oh, oh, Matthew 121? No, don't give him the mic. He gave the wrong answer. Uh, Azariah. One in the, uh, eight, I think one in the, uh, 17. What did it say? About what is the of the Holy Ghost. Okay, uh, that's it. Give him the mic so y'all can, nobody can hear. Why are y'all hogging the mic? They told me five passes. All right, now repeat it. Repeat what you said. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, I believe, is either verse 17 or 18. What is conceived of the, is of the Holy Ghost. Right. And when the part where it says, yes, that's verse 20, actually. That, for that which is conceived in thee is of the Holy Ghost. 
Remember the part where the angel said um, in Luke, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and overshadow thee? That goes with what we read here in Acts 13, 23. Read that again. Acts 13, verse 23. Of this man's seed hath God according to his promise. According to his promise. Okay? It was going to come to pass. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. From there. Now, young cop, yes. Uh, Deuteronomy 18 and 18. Is that the precept for that too? What is that? Yes, yes, you can use that also. Yeah, perfect. Oh, that's what I Exactly. Was, yeah. Now, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 8. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Y'all see that? So to keep the prophets keep telling us. Of, but y'all, we keep letting Esau tell us, no, it don't mean that. God told me that. And okay. From there. <laughs> Go to uh, Acts 2 and 30. Acts 2 verse 30. <laughs> Acts 2 and 30 again. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with... <laughs> Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath, with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh. You want to stress that, according to the flesh. So the fruit of his loins is not spiritual. It's according to his flesh. Look at a man's flesh. What is the fruit of your loins, your penis, your rod? Sperm comes from that. Read it again. Of the, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Y'all see that? Uh, watch this. Let's go to Luke. 4.22 Luke 4.22 Luke 4 verse 22 And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth and they said is not this Joseph's son? So they see the question isn't this Joseph's son? Ain't that Joseph boy right there? I know him! That Joseph boy right there! There ain't no parentheses there. Ain't, and there ain't no parentheses there, right? Thank you. From there go to John 6.42 and it didn't say Joseph's stepson. Right, it didn't say stepson. Thank you. John 6, verse 42. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Y'all see that? Whose father and mother we know? Damn. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wow. Whose what? Whose father and mother we know. So, I guess they know the angel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? We know your mother and father. What are you talking about, Christ? Okay. So you want, this is another quick way to power. Okay. So from there, go to John 1.45. Yeah, man, then, yeah, remember in Israel, there was a custom when you have kids, always the neighborhood know. Right, yeah, the remember. neighborhood knew just like when you got married, yeah. the neighborhood knew. Yeah. Everybody knew you was a spouse, yeah. was no secrets. Mm -hmm. it's crazy. It's crazy. John 145. John 145. <laughs> Philip findeth the Daniel and saith unto him, we have found him, of whom Moses in the law, meaning Deuteronomy 18, verse 18, and the Genesis prophets, 49 and 10, and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Jesus of Nazareth, the son, the son of Joseph, the son of Joseph, the son of Joseph. Y'all see that? So if anybody is confused, you're just stuck on stupid. And you need a cross to fall on your head. From there. Matthew 13 and 15. Did we read that already? Matthew 13, verse 55. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Is not this the carpenter's son? Isn't this Joseph boy the carpenter's son? Go ahead. Is not his mother called Mary? Isn't his mama called Mary? And his brethren? And this boy got brothers. 
James and Joseph. We know his brothers James and Joseph. Go ahead. And Simon. And Simon. And Judas. And Judas. Read on. And his sisters. And we know all his sisters too. Are they not all with us? So they all knew Christ's brothers and sisters. They knew his whole family. They knew his whole family. So that's why Christ knows what we go through. You got knucklehead brothers, knucklehead sisters. I know what Christ, I know what y'all went through. I went through the same thing. Went through the same thing. And you know what that kills? There's a doctrine that says Mary was an ever virgin. That she never had sex. This right here, can we read that again? An ever virgin. Wow. Is, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then have this man all these things? So Christ had a big family of brothers and sisters. Now, give me that one you just pulled. Mm -hmm. Not that one. No. The other one. Right, okay. It's Matthew. I got it. You got it? Yeah. We going here. Now I want y'all to keep in mind Matthew 13, 55, 56. Watch this. I'm going to see who got the answer for this. <laughs> uh, this is the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn oh, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he called his name Jesus. What that mean? Use that too. I know they use that. I want to put Isaac. Um, that's basically saying that Joseph didn't sleep with Mary until Christ was until Christ was born. Right. And he had to wait how long? Um, 40 days. That's what the law said. You have to wait. If it's a boy child, you got can we read that? Can we get that in the scripture? Where is it? Leviticus what? 12? Yeah. Let's cause somebody right now. Where's that in the law? You women that be having sex two days after you give birth, you crazy. <laughs> I don't even know why you in more pain all jacked up. Fun. I just wait a week. Just simple as hell. Vegas 12, verse 4. No, it's not verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, conceive seed. Where will we go, Josiah? Conceive seed? Leviticus 15 and 16. Very good. Come on. Then she shall be unclean seven days. How long? Seven days. Go ahead. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity. Just for, like during her menstrual, she's unclean seven days. Go ahead. For her infirmity shall she be unclean. And then the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Mm -hmm. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. Three and thirty days. How much is that? Forty. Three and thirty is forty. Okay. It's it's how long? How much? Thirty-three days. Now you add the seven to it. Forty. You get forty. Everybody understand that? So he could not have sex. He had to wait those forty days. So can you read that again? And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and they called his name Jesus. Y'all see that? So he had to wait how long? He had to wait 40 days. 40. All of this goes back to the law. And then guess what? After he, after the 40 days, what did Joseph do? He had sex again. Because the proof is what? Matthew 13, 55. His brothers and his sisters. They had a whole family there. Big family. You know, the doctrine is, he went and contacted Angel and said, now can I have sex with her? Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's how the brothers and sisters came. <laughs> now that's let's go to Luke. That's right. <laughs> now this is Luke we're going to get when they was on the road coming from Jerusalem. Listen up now. This is the book of St. Luke chapter 2 and verse 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrow. So what did Mary know that the dumb Christian don't know today? <laughs> that Christ has a father. That Christ had an earthly father. Read it again. It didn't sink into the minds. 
It's, it's, it's show that, <laughs> what verse you at? This is verse 48. 248. Got, let this let this hot butter marinate in your brain. <laughs> let it get in there. Let it get in there. Like a biscuit. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. See that? So Mary is calling Joseph the father of Christ. So why are we reading this thing go, that's not what the white man done taught me. And why, why is there no place that they say stepfather? Right. I still want to hear someone says stepfather. Exactly. Exactly. Now, this shows you Mary knew who the father of a baby was. That's the point I want to bring out. Mary knew. She said, this right here is my, is my husband's son. He is your father and we both were looking for you. Yep. Hey, and even in the world, when people introduce their kids, they'll let them know this is not his real dad. Right. Okay? Y'all exactly. don't hear that? This is not his real father. So it should be there at least one time. Hello world, this is not his real father. <laughs> Now, Titus, we'll close it out here with Titus 1.14. Now, mm, Titus 1.14. Oh, I'm sorry, before that, 1 John 4 and 3. Give me that one. I forgot 1 John 4 and 3. Mm. Mm. Y'all gotta hit this one. Here we go. That, 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 that dagger must have fell out the boot. We picked it up and gave it back. <laughs> this is the book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. So if you don't confess that Christ came of the seed of man, if you don't confess that Joseph is his earthly father and Mary his mother, mm -hmm. you are it not of God. Is not of God. Go ahead. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Where is whereof? whereof ye have heard that it should come? And even now already is it in the world. I'm gonna give me one word for that spirit of Antichrist. One word. Christianity. 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 Did y'all hear that? Read it again, read it yeah. again. It's heavy. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Wherein, whereof ye have heard that it should come. I'm going to see who's thinking. Somebody will say to you brothers on the street teaching, Christ was immaculately born. And I do believe that he came in. He had flesh, but he was immaculately born. What scripture we read? Maybe eight, the eight last ones. Which one is the best one to hit him with? Hand and I, your hand is up. Microphone. Give Hand and I the microphone. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> Don't turn it off. It's on. Keep right? the mic on. Don't turn it off. I'll go with um, Wizard of Solomon. No. That's a good one. I won't say no. That is good, Hananiah. That is good. I do like that. But I want another one. Quick, quick, quick. Yeah. Um, Acts chapter 2, verse 29 and 30. Yes, uh, that's it. Can we read that real quick? Acts 2, 30. Watch the word. The microphone. We didn't even hear him. What, what happened? They turned it off? No, it was on. We just didn't Acts chapter 2, verse 29 and 30. Right. Read Acts 2, 30 real quick. Yeah. Acts 2, verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him. Here it come. That of the fruit of his loins. That of the fruit of his loins. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. The fruit of his loins. According to the flesh. So you can't go back to 1 John. You, you. You, 1 John 4 and 3 again. 
And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is What kind of flesh? Of the fruit of his loins. If you don't confess that, you're not of God. Is not of God. Go ahead. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. You know why it's the spirit of Antichrist? Because if Christ does not have a genealogy, a generation of forefathers, that would justify them saying he came for who? Everybody. Everybody. All nations. That's Christianity. That's Christianity right there. All right, we're going to end it, Titus 1 and 14. Titus 1 verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fable. Brothers, the Immaculate Conception is a Jewish fable. It's a lie. Go ahead. And commandments of men. It's a commandment of men. The white man taught that thing. Christianity taught that thing. Go ahead. That turned from the truth. It turns you from the truth. The law. Right. The law. It turns you from it. Go ahead. Unto the pure, all things are pure. If you're pure, you and this truth in sincerity, all things are pure. That's why Christ said about not being offended. How did it go? Blessed is he. Blessed is he who is not offended in me. So if you're pure in this truth, you're sincere, nothing we go over in this Bible is going to offend you. It's pure teaching. Go ahead. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. You see that? That's when you're going to get immaculate conception. That's when you're going to get Joseph was his stepfather. I don't deal with that subject. That's when you're going to get I don't deal with that subject. When that comes up, I don't talk about it. Right, I don't talk about it. I just leave it alone. <laughs> He's defiled. And the Bible says, what's the other word behind defiled? Unbelieving. Unbelieving. You're going to hear a lot of things. Oh, I also don't believe this. And I don't believe that. And I don't believe this thing you brought out either. That's what you're going to hear. Okay, everybody understand that?